All right, so let's check in with the Money Days. Devin Morgan joining us. Hi, Devin. So finally, we have a court ruling that makes Steinhoff's multi-billion rand settlement binding. I suppose the big question is, what does this mean for shareholders and what does this mean for Marcus Yerstein? Yeah, indeed. So the Western Cape High Court, Sally, this morning approving Steinhoff's bid to have its 25 billion rand settlement proposal made final and binding, as you say. It paves the way for settlement payouts. Tens of thousands of claimants lost out in the company's share price plunge. You'll remember that happened in December 2017 amid an accounting scandal. Well, Lindsay Dentlinger has been following the story. Lindsay, thanks very much indeed for your time. Um, what does this morning's very short ruling mean globally for this company? I think it was quite surprising today, Devin. We were expecting this matter to sit uh, for several days and over in just uh, under an hour, uh, the judge saying she found no reason not to um, approve this um, settlement agreement, meaning that all those uh, litigants uh, who have been waiting, who have been part of proceedings and meetings and discussions and litigation over the years will finally um, receive compensation for their losses. There are various categories degrees of claimants, as you know, other than financial creditors, uh, and so they will finally get uh, what's due to them, what was agreed um, uh, by um, them and their lawyers uh, over time, uh, and that now a done deal uh, of uh, the court, as you know, it was already approved in the Netherlands last year, and they needed uh, the approval of a South African court as well to make it binding, and so they can start uh, to see the process move a lot quicker from now on in actually getting returns for what they've lost. But, Lindsay, of course, there's a caveat here, isn't there? I mean, there are conditions being placed on claimants, aren't there? And just a quick one while you're answering that, uh, Marcus Joester, uh, people want accountability from him. So the first part of that, uh, Devon, yes, certainly at one point uh, late last year, we thought this whole uh, settlement agreement would be scuppered by uh, several uh, attempts to, li um, to liquidate uh, Steinhoff, most notably from the former owners of Techie Town. You will recall that they were really unhappy about the settlement proposal, believing that um, it just in terms of accountability, as you point out, and that disgraced former CEO, Marcus Joester, that this company should uh, instead be liquidated. But late last year, they reached an out-of-court settlement settlement and so part of this agreement means that all those liquidation applications that are still pending before the court will be withdrawn by the 15th of February that is the date uh, when the settlement agreement uh, officially comes into effect and it will also mean Devon that all the claimants who now stand to benefit from this agreement have no future uh, rights to be able to litigate against this company or in any ways try to claim anything this will be their final settlement and they'll have no further legal recourse as uh, it goes stands for legal recourse for Marcus Euster well we'll have to wait and see what the NPA how far they are with their investigations we certainly know that uh, overseas in Germany Marcus Euster is uh, facing charges but it appears that it's still going to be a very long uh, time before we see any uh, action against him here in South Africa we know the NPA has in the past said that this is a mammoth investigation it requires uh, so much expertise it's multinational um, in terms of bank accounts and um, all kinds of things and this is going to be a really really complicated investigation so we will hold our breath and wait to see how long how many more years it might take before those like Marcus Eusta responsible for this whole mess in the first place how and when they are ever held accountable but here's just a quick summary of proceedings as they unfolded in the Western Cape Division of the High Court today Compensating investors who lost in one of the country's biggest corporate fraud has been months in the making. The deal was sanctioned by a Netherlands court last September, but required the approval of a South African court too. Attempts by disgruntled former shareholders to have Steinhoff liquidated instead could have scuppered the settlement proposal. But an out-of-court settlement was reached last month with former Techie Town owners. To their best interest as compared with the comparative of the liquidation, and that's also been demonstrated to, um, to be far more beneficial. And no doubt that's why where we currently find ourselves today, um, on the 24th of January, there's this overwhelming support, even from the quarters that were previously opposed to, to the sanction. In granting the order, the court said it was not for it to second guess whether the compensation agreed to by creditors was in their best interests. There appears to be no further basis upon which 
a court could then effectively um, find that the compromise um, or the proposal of compromise is not um, just and equitable and fair in the circumstances. The settlement is expected to come into effect on the 15th of February. Claimants will then have no further rights to litigate against the company in future. Lindsay Dentlinger, Cape Town.